Hi everyone, I'm Doug Fraser, one of the Metro Vancouver Paramedic Practice Educators and the International Trauma Life Support Chapter Coordinator for BCEHS. As you may know, today is National Stop the Bleed Day. So the team at Trauma Services BC, Clinical and Medical Programs and Learning thought today would be a great day for us to take a look at some of our hemorrhage control techniques and tools. The first technique that I'd like to discuss is direct pressure. Remember, direct pressure has to be applied directly to the bleeding site to be effective. Putting pressure in the general vicinity of a wound doesn't do you or your patient any good. So it's important that you identify where the hemorrhage is coming from before you apply your trauma dressings to these patients. If that direct pressure is not effective, it's probably a really good idea to confirm your location and site selection of where your pressure is applied prior to escalating your hemorrhage control techniques. But if direct pressure isn't adequate to achieve hemorrhage control, it might be time to think about escalating to wound packing or a tourniquet application. If your patient is bleeding from their axillary or inguinal creases, which is to say their armpit or their groin areas, wound packing is gonna be your best technique for achieving hemorrhage control. Remember, we don't pack wounds on the torso, the head, or the neck, and most injuries on the limbs are amenable to tourniquets, so wound packing isn't necessarily the most effective technique. Wound packing, like direct pressure, does require that you identify the bleeding source, and that may be difficult in some deep puncture wounds such as GSWs or stabbings. But once you've identified the source of the hemorrhage, you'll be applying direct pressure to it using the wound packing material that comes in your Oleus trauma dressing. Remember that the pressure allows the clot to form and stabilize, and that that clot formation and stabilization can take some time, which means that once you've applied pressure in onto that bleeding site, it must be sustained to definitive care for that patient. Tourniquet application is fairly straightforward. You want to ensure that you're at least two inches proximal to the wound, the hemorrhage site. You want to avoid placing the tourniquet over a joint, such as a wrist, an ankle, an elbow, or a knee. And you want to ensure that you've taken all of the slack out of the tourniquet band before engaging the windlass. If you can slip more than two fingers under your tourniquet band, you probably have too much slack in your system and you're gonna to need to take some of that up to be effective before engaging the windlass. Remember that you secure the Velcro back to itself, nice, tight, snug, ideally against the skin. Remember that you're turning the windlass until all bright bleeding stops, but sometimes that's not gonna be effective. Some patients, such as complete amputations, may have ongoing hemorrhage through the bone channels that you're unable to compress. If one tourniquet is inadequate to achieve hemorrhage control, go right ahead and place a second tourniquet immediately adjacent to and proximal to that first one. Before we go, I just want to remind everybody of a couple of other interventions that we have in our toolkit as paramedics in BC. Never underestimate the value of a splint or a pelvic binder in controlling hemorrhage and making your patient more comfortable. And please, please don't forget to administer TXA to those patients for whom it's indicated. The effectiveness of TXA drops rapidly after the point of injury to effectively zero at three hours, but the biggest effect is had the earlier the medication is administered. Now we know that we're not administering TXA to as many patients in BC as we should be, and we'd like your help and support in bringing those numbers up to achieve the best possible outcomes for our patients. Trauma accounts for approximately 60% of BCEHS call volumes, and uncontrolled bleeding continues to be one of the leading causes of preventable deaths around the globe. Simple measures that we can take in the pre-hospital setting to limit or control that ongoing hemorrhage can have massive implications, both from the patient's perspective, but from a systems-wide perspective as well. Thank you very much for your time today, everybody. 
Have a great day. Stay safe.